the five samadhis on the way to uh, Lendi Park. The first one is Abdul Baba's Darga. We have already spoken about Abdul Baba. However, there are some salient points that I would like to mention here. Um, he already had a guru who was Amir Uddin Fakir. Um, because of the deep Rinanabandic ties with Abdul Baba, Baba came in his guru's dream and gave him two mangoes and said, give it to Abdullah and send it to me, which he did. So, Abdul Baba came to Shirdi. As soon as Abdul Baba came, he said, my kala kawa has come, my crow has come. Um, Abdul Baba did all the menial work for Baba. He washed his kafni, he cleaned the streets of Shirdi. Um, and Baba made him sleep very little and eat very little. And on top of that, he made him read the Quran the whole night. I mean, he went through a rigorous uh, penance. Um, <clears throat> what uh, is nice about the descendants who are now living there is that every day at 10 o'clock, they go to the Samadhi Mandir, take off the chadar and they put um, gaunti roses. That is uh, not hybrid roses, but the wild roses which smell beautifully. They take off the chadar and like Abdul Baba would do, he was given the job of cleaning and maintaining the samadhi. They put the flowers, then they put the chadar on and then they come back. At that time, even the villagers can go in and have a, um, a look at the samadhi or, or worship the samadhi. The other thing that um, the descendants do, uh, Ram Naomi and Urs fall at the same time. So on the second day or the main festival of Ram Nami, their descendants take out Urs. Urs was started by Gopal Rao Gund, who was a circle inspector. He was a government of official and he wanted to honor Baba and so he started the Urs. Urs means when you're wedded to the Lord or your beloved, that's the Lord. When you pass from this earth, you're united with him. The, at about 9 o'clock in the night, uh, they take the procession out. It starts from Abdul Baba's cottage and goes around the village. Um, here they have a canopy, uh, which is four thin, uh, four thin bamboos and top of it is there is a panja and a green galif on which columns are written from the Quran. Uh, four people will carry it. There will be one person leading the procession. He will have a chalice with um, loban in it. And just like the Catholic priests uh, wave the chalice, the, the area is sanctified and purified for this uh, Urs procession to move on. Under the Urs, they, have, they carry <clears throat> a platter of uh, fruits, um, savory, sweets, confectionery, uh, chadar, one for Baba and one for Abdul Baba. They have a platter because of the sandal or the sandal which is put on the nimbar of the Dwarkamai. They will carry scrapings of the chandan and they will have itar perfume and rose water kept in that platter. It goes round the village. First it goes to the Samadhi Mandir and then they offer Baba the platter of fruit, sweets, and they give him a nice chadar. Then they come out and honor Abdul Baba, and they do the same to him. Then the procession returns. It goes into the Dwarka Mai, and they take the sandalwood scrapings, mix it with rose water, ether, and perfume, put the hands in it, and um, mm, paste it on the nimbar. This is also given in the Charitra. This is a beautiful ceremony which many, many people have not seen. And it would be nice to see the Hindu version of Ram's birth. And in the night, they what the Muslims did. Even today, there is unity between the Hindu and the Muslims. This is what one can learn from this. <clears throat> um, Abdul Baba was um, given a, a room in the uh, Samadhi Mandir to look after it, uh, look after the Samadhi, which he did. And the other thing that Abdul Baba did was he wrote down everything that Baba spoke. 
So this he used later in life as um, a book of predictions. If someone asked him a question, he would just open the page and um, tell them what the result would be. And it always worked the way he predicted it. Um, the descendants are very kind, courteous. They let you go into their um, cottage. Uh, if you go to the Darga, they will bless you with the peacock uh, wands and uh, they will let you uh, do Pradikshana of Abdul Baba's Samadhi. So um, this is what I wanted to talk about Abdul Baba. The next Samadhi belongs to Bahu Maharaj Kumbar. He was a very saintly man when he came to Shirdi. He came from a village called Kairi Nimgaon. Um, he did not have many possessions. The only thing that he had was a blanket which he kept on his shoulder. He wore a khadar uh, vest, a dhoti and a cap. Um, he came to Shirdi and he would uh, wander about. Initially, he would wander about, go to Nimgaon, Rahata, sit under the banyan tree on the way to Rahata. There was a beautiful banyan tree which is now cut off. And um, But always he came back to Shirdi. Um, he was a very gentle person. Um, if anyone gave him money, usually he refused. But if he did accept it, he would look out for the children in the village. And if any child was sick, he would give it to the mother and say, um, buy some medicine, buy some milk for this baby, you know, the baby looks so thin. So, you know, give, feed it, feed it. Um, the other thing that he did was, he, it was such an endearing quality. He used to say, even the trees feel cold. So if anybody gave him a blanket, he would wrap the tree with it and say the tree is shivering, so it feels cold. Um, from 8 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock, he went about, using his blanket as a broom and he cleaned every street, nook and gully of Shirdi. He also would clean the open gutters so there was not a single open gutter that was overflowing. This he did right to the end of his time. Um, Bab, he would go very stealthily and meet Baba and Baba gave him some kind of an updesh. So the other devotees were very curious and they said, what does Baba say to you? So he smiled and says, Baba gives me one fourth of a bakri and he talks good, good. He talks sweet things to me. What does he talk? He said sweet things. That is what he talks to me. And even after Baba's Maha Samadhi, he would go stealthily to the Samadhi Mandar and sit there and communicate sort of with Baba. This is one devotee that Mm, one knows that Baba gave Updesh to sort of, although he never revealed what was said to him, but he would go and, and come back with the, you know, his face would be so bright um, with what Baba had told him to do or something. Uh, every year, beca uh, because he was such a great devotee, the Sangsthan itself does his Punyatiti, in which his photograph is brought from the Samadhi Mandir to his samadhi and there is a procession with lalkari band vaja and a uh, musical band and there is a bhandara that the samsthan gives to everybody anybody is welcome to come and um, that is done many people of karnataka believe in him so much that when they have a little baby they bring it to a samadhi and take the mud from uh, the bottom of the samadhi and they put it on the child's tongue and pray to him to make this child like him, kind, gentle, thoughtful and um, courteous. Um, this is something that I haven't seen with the other devotees. Um, so, this is what I would like to say about Baha Maharaj Kambar.
Narayan Shankar Ved was his name. It was Baba who called him Nanavali, so the rest of the people called him Nanavali. He came to Shirdi as a very young man and he met Baba. And at that time, Baba said to him, This is the key to my kingdom. I give it to you. It is locked. I give it to you. Do not betray me and I will not betray me. This was a, a like a pact that they had between themselves. Baba realized that he was a spiritual man, but he was rather eccentric. The villagers, some liked him and some didn't. Some thought he was a troublemaker. Some thought that he was a very spiritual man and like an Auduta. Um, Nanavali did many strange things. He would put uh, scorpions on his tongue. He would put excreta on his tongue. He would um, plaster his body with dirt, get all the children of the village to come and uh, follow him and make a ruckus in the Dwarkamai. Uh, at other times, he would take a long um, piece of cloth and put it on his pant, attach it to his pant at the back like a tail and he would prance about like Hanuman and say, I am Hanuman and things like that. And again, all the kids would follow him and um, Baba would gently rebuke him and say, Nanavali, don't do this. If you do this, all my devotees will run away. You're making such a noise and I can't talk to my devotees if you do this. However, he continued doing what he had to do. But there was one nice thing about Nanavali. He saw whenever there was a crowd, he saw to it that every devotee had a chance to talk to Baba. He um, sort of um, arranged it in such a way. Now you go, it's your turn and you go and so on and so forth. In the uh, Charitra, there is that incident of uh, Nanavali coming and asking Baba to get up from his seat and then he sits on the seat. Mm. He tells Jutinder about that incident. Jutinder Tarkad asks Nanavali about it and he says, Oh my God, the intensity and the divinity of that place is just, of the seat was so much. I, I did sit on the seat, but when I got up, I bowed to Baba and I held Baba's hand and made him sit sit in on a seat again and said, Deva, this only you and only you are the Purn Parabrahma and only it befits you to sit on the seat. My place is at your feet. Um, this gives some idea of how much he loved Baba. And... After Baba's Mahasamadhi, he just couldn't bear it. He kept saying, my mama has gone away, my mama has gone. So what's the use of living? And he just lay down and said, on the 13th day, he just lay down and said, it's no use of staying in this world anymore. And he gave up his pran, that is, he took Jivanta Samadhi and over his body, it's his Samadhi is built. So this was this great highly misunderstood devotee who loved Baba so much that he gave up his life for Baba. Although uh, from the outside, externally it looked like um, Nanavali was re really rude and asked Baba to get up. But he had such intense faith and such love for Baba that he was, he took Jivanta Samadhi, he gave up his life because his Sadguru was not there and he couldn't bear the thought of spending another day on earth without his Sadhguru. That is love that is intense and so much for his Guru that I really admire this man. V.P. Iyer was a sugar technologist. He was not born in Shirdi, nor did he ever see Baba. Uh, he came to Shirdi, but he was utterly devoted to Baba. And he was very friendly with the Samstad. Finally, he got a job in the, the sugar mill on Pimpalwadi Road. So he stayed in Shirdi. Um, at the end, he had got cholera or he had got some illness. And he was really sick and he... Um, was in the last stages 
all at that time he couldn't speak or anything because of his illness he kept looking at baba's photograph lovingly pinningly then just before he died he signaled to the people there to give the photograph to him and he put it against his chest and died and that is his samadhi i for one don't think his samadhi ought to be there because he never saw uh, baba i would have rather liked if shama's vastra samadhi or a book that baba gave like das ganu has a vastra samadhi so some possession of shama would have been put there or even dikshit for that matter or dabalkar or any of the other devotees would have been put in his place uh, that is my opinion and i hope i'm not offending anyone The last samadhi is the best of them. That is Tatya Kote Patil samadhi. Tatya was the beloved son of Bajama, and um, Baba and Tatya had such a deep Rinana Bandik uh, relationship that it is you know it one feels like laughing because they would do such childlike things, and Baba would laugh peals of laughter. and um things like tickling tatya that made uh, baba very joyous here is the creator of the whole universe who gets happy if he tickles tatya and tatya laughs oh my god well as far as tatya was concerned he came to the dwarka mai for 14 years and slept at that time malsapati tatya and baba would sleep their feet together and their heads apart when it was time for baba to go into the chaudi uh it was tatya who would say mama chal until tatya came no matter if he was delayed in his field baba didn't go himself to the dwarkamai he would wait for tatya tatya would come put his arm under his armpit and say mama chal and the mama went to and slept the same thing in the morning even if he was late or he had work in the field baba didn't move his tatya had to be there since in those days there was no playing field for the kids of shirdi so tatya and his friends would come to the dwarka mai and they would play a game of stones in which you have you throw the stones and then you pick up one and you uh, catch it. um slowly baba would go uh, creep and stand there and say look at the cows have come and you know, why what are they doing or uh, distract them and so he put his foot on one of the stones and pull it towards him and they would be searching for those stones madly and in the end um that they would say um baba you took my stone he'll say no re i never took your stone he says you move away from there just move i'm sure you hid in the stone or you hid in it somewhere else. and then um baba would move and he would pick up the stone and say look this is what you're doing to us for things we don't have any place to play and you steal our stones so mm. and this again was seemed to be very humorous to baba um baba would do arm wrestling with uh, tatya uh, baba would use his right hand and poor tatya has to use his left hand and then um, baba would squeeze his finger then tatya would um, not to be out done would squeeze baba's finger back then baba would apply more force and so would that and then you'll say oh kotya are you determined to fracture my fingers what are you doing why are you doing this and again there would be laughter the other thing that they uh, this was arm wrestling the other thing that baba did in the afternoon was he would dance, like lord shri krishna he would dance for tatya and this was a very strange dance in which he had very exaggerated movements of the head and the body and he would spin around on his toes and things like that and tatya and his friends would have a whale of a time and the most important thing for baba then was to see that tatya is entertained and when he would laugh baba would feel very happy about it that um, his 
nephew has had a whale of a time, there's no place for him to play really and things like that. The other things that Baba did which was very strange, uh, he would distract Tatya and then suddenly fall at his feet. And then um, Tatya would get very upset and say, Deva, don't do these things. You know, you're causing sin. I mean, I will be in, I will get a sin. He'll say, Are Kotya, what do you know? You don't know all these things. Or he would say, um, suddenly touch his feet and say, Salam alaikum, walaikum salam, or something like that. And then he'll say, Baba, you're not supposed to touch my feet. I'm the one who is to touch your feet and fall at your feet. He says, um, Tatya, you don't know all these things. Um, this speaks about the Renanabandik ties that they had with each other for generations, for incarnations out of incarnations. That's Baba was so interested in making Tatya just laugh, smile, and Baba would feel extremely happy. Um, Sometimes um, Tatya would get angry with Baba and he'll say, uh, like if there was something to eat and it was given to somebody else first, then Tatya would feign anger and say, I'm going to the chowdi, I'm not going to sit with you anymore. And Baba would get bent out of shape and send someone, go call Tatya, go call Tatya. Um, and then um, that person would go to Tatya and he'd say, I'm not coming, why should I come? He did not think of me. So, um, uh, Baba would say, tell him I think of him all the time. No. And then this would go on for some time and then Tatya would come and sit there a little away from Baba in a half. And then um, Baba would pacify him. Um, a very endearing thing that Baba did when after 14 years he had family responsibilities, his father had died. He started going back to his home to sleep. Um, um, whenever he went, Baba would say to Tatya, Tatya, don't forget to come and check on me in the night. Here, Tatya is checking on the Parabrahma. That is something that speaks volumes for the relationship that these two have. In the Charitra, this line is written and I feel like crying. The Tatya was so ill. When Baba took Mahasamadhi and Baba gave his life up for Tatya, this, I need not say anything more, this shows the relationship between the two of them. Uh, however, Baba would do very childlike things with him. He would play with him the whole afternoon through. Um, when it was time for him to sleep in the chowdi, um, they would play a, a game called Songate. This is like chess. This chess board is a cloth board which is in the uh, museum. It has uh, like a cross, it has boxes and you have to keep moving the dice. And Baba would cheat and then Tate would get angry with them. And they would be shouting and <laughs> saying, you're a cheater. And then they say, no, I didn't cheat. So, um, at that time, Radha Krishnamai would send for them milk, water, so that the requirements would be taken care of. The other thing, as we know in the Charitra, Baba lost the wrestling game with Mohiuddin Tambuli. And that was a landmark in which he changed his dress and started wearing a kafni and a kaupina and the cloth on his head, Sirvesh. Uh, Baba loved wrestling. He would call these wrestlers to Shirdi and he would give them gr great grand prices. So Tatya was not to be outdone. I mean, why would he get left behind? Um, so he, what he would do, he would put his uh, hand under Baba's buttocks and lift him up. And then um, uh, Baba would say, Oh Kotya, um, um, you will sprain your muscle or you'll drop me. Don't drop me. Of course, no such thing happened. But then both of them would sit and giggle and laugh. Sometimes um, Baba would hide uh, Tatya's pagdi and Oparna behind a, a pillar of the Dwarkamai and then he would shove him in that direction and then he would uh, find it and Tatya would say, how did this happen? So Baba would 
laugh uh, as if it was very hilarious. Um, Tatya also took liberties with Baba. Sometimes he took off the sirvesh or his headgear and he put on his pagdi on top of Baba's head. Then he took a shawl and placed it over his shoulder. And then he would bring a mirror, Tatya would bring a mirror to Baba and Baba would preen and say, Oh, don't I look so great with your uh, shahi um, pagdi? I am always like that. Where am I a fakir? I am so well dressed. Look at me. And then <laughs> Tatya and he would laugh. Um, there are so many things that um, can be mentioned about that play. And they, this would usually happen in the afternoon when people were not there. If by chance a, a devotee came, immediately Baba had the stern look. And Tatya would be laughing and it looked like Tatya is laughing for no reason. And Baba would sit very calmly and welcome that devotee. This was the life that Mama and uncle and nephew had. Um, Baba used to say that Bhai Jama was his sister in previous incarnation. So, Tatya called him Mama. Uh, Tatya was very sick when uh, Baba was taking Samadhi, Maha Samadhi. And Baba was so concerned about Tatya that he would send um, Ramchandra Patil to go and check on him. And the greatest, Baba just gave up his life for Tatya and um, Tatya recovered. He re led a very fruitful life. He has descendants who have hotels on Pimpalwadi Road and they also are leading a very fruitful life. When there is a Chaudi procession, his descendants carry Baba's photograph because Baba would not come back from the Chaudi till Tatya came and picked him and brought him. The other thing um, that they do is when the Aarti happens in the Chaudi, they give Baba the chillim to smoke. So this is an honour bestowed upon them by the Samstar. So, thus we complete the five Samadhis going to Lendibad. Side up.